Yes, yes. Minimche yule MC. Looking like a This video is uh in this video we're going to solve some RC and RL circuits using the techniques that we've learned. Uh let me remind you of something you probably already know. Uh any circuit can be reduced down to a Thevenin and or Norton equivalent, okay? Now, once you know those equivalents, you can treat this inductor or this capacitor as the load, and we've got a situation where we've got uh, one inductor, one resistor. Now, this, uh, if we have a source there, it's gonna be a step response. If the source is not there, it's gonna be a natural response. But uh, the general solution applies for all of these circuits that you see here. We saw that all of those circuits have the same general equation of state. Uh, this is the natural response for the RL and the RCs. This is the step response for the RL and the RCs. You've seen this sheet before. And all of them have <clears throat> this as the general solution. So we're gonna take that approach and we're going to solve some RL and RC circuits. So let's get started. <clears throat> we're going to uh, solve one uh, that's going to be RC first. So here's the circuit. We're going to have a voltage source and that voltage source is equal to 6 UT volts like that. Okay, so before t equals zero, it's zero, but at t equals zero, it's six volts. At the same time, that switch is closed. Uh, so this is kind of redundant, but nevertheless, we'll, we'll work it out this way, all right? Let's also suppose, let's, let's say that this is the case, there's already a voltage on the capacitor. So V not at zero is one volt. Okay, so our job here now is to find V naught for all times. All right, so to approach this problem, <clears throat> we can't really combine resistors here easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an RTH uh, and a VTH. And when we do that, we're gonna set it up so that we've got one of the situations in that previous slide. Let's uh, find RTH first. Um, and this is gonna be real easy. Uh, the capacitor itself is the load. So imagine that these are the terminals here. And to find RTH, it's just gonna be remove the source and figure out what the equivalent resistance is for this, okay, once the source is removed. Okay, so everything's in K ohms here. So we're gonna have a 20 that's in parallel with a 40, and then we're gonna add to that the 10. Okay, so what does that turn out to be? Well, according to my calculation, it is 23.33 K ohm, all right? So that's what um, RTH is, 23.33 K ohm, okay? Uh, now, at this stage, we could go ahead and compute tau. Tau is going to be RTH times C, times that capacitor there. So that's gonna be 23.33 times 10 to the third ohms times C, which is three times 10 to the negative six farads. Multiply those together, you end up with 0 0.07 seconds, okay? So that's seven 100. So one over tau is going to be 100 over seven. All right, that may be handy to us later on. Now we can find, um, VTH. Okay, and to find VTH, we go back to this original circuit here. And this, for any time greater than zero, is going to be six volts there. 
So our VTH, keep in mind, is after T equals zero here. What is this voltage that's going to be VTH right across those two terminals? Now this is the open circuit condition, so you're not going to have a current flowing through the 10K ohm resistor here. If there's no current flowing through it, then there's no voltage drop. So effectively, you're, you can ignore that resistor. Uh, when it comes to calculating VTH, it's really going to be the voltage across the 40K ohm here. And that's what we're going to be interested in. And, and this is real easy because it's a voltage divider now. So VTH is going to equal uh, 40K over 40K plus 20K times 6 volts. And I believe that that turns out to be 4 volts. So that's VTH. Now, if you'll think about it here, that's also going to be V final because that VTH across those two terminals right there, once uh, the capacitor is fully charged, so let's say there's a current coming down this way after T equals zero, and that's what's fully charging the capacitor here. After a long time, that current's going to die down because the capacitor becomes fully charged and there's going to be no more current here. And if there's no more current, well, then we've got this situation. There's no current flowing through the 10K and VTH is going to be the voltage across the 40K. So V final here is going to be the voltage across the 40K. So VTH is 4 volts, but that's also V naught final is four volts like that. Okay, so I think we've got everything we need to now just plug it in to the, uh, you know, the, uh, the general equation. So V naught of T is going to be V final plus V naught initial, that's V naught final I should say, uh, minus V naught final times e to the negative t over tau. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 4 plus, now the initial here was 1, so 1 minus the final, which is 4, times e to the negative t over 0.07. Volts. Okay, reducing that down a little bit more, that turns out to be 4 minus 3e to the negative. Now you take that, that's going to be 100 over 7. That turns out to be, according to my calculations, 14.29t. So that number of volts, that is v naught of t, that right there. Okay, so let's see if that applies. Before T equals zero, before T equals zero, uh, the voltage should be one volts. And let's see, before T equals zero, nope, it's not going to work out that way. And the reason it's not going to work out that way, if you tried to plug in a T equals uh, negative some number here, is because we have this singularity function and it's part of the source, so we need a singularity function here as part of the solution. So here's where it needs to be inserted. V naught of t equals 4 minus 3 times e to the negative 14.29t multiplied by u of t, like that. That is the number of volts, okay? Now before t equals 0, all of this is, uh, you know, that's going to be zero. So this exponent of the exponential is going to be zero. So e to the zero is going to be one. So we're going to have four minus three is just going to be one volt before t equals zero. After t equals zero, then this is one. And it's going to follow that equation right there. Okay. So you must include the singularity function. That's very important if you have a singularity function as part of your original problem there. Okay, so this is the solution for 
the voltage across the capacitor. And that's, that's all we were interested in for that problem. So we'll just stop there and move on uh, to another problem. That's in units of amps. So let's, let's look at this first and figure out what it's saying here. Before T equals zero, then this one is active. So uh, let's say if T is negative values, this one is going to be zero. But if T is negative values, this one is actually going to work here. So it's going to be five amps. I sub S is going to be five amps for all times prior to T equals zero. But at T equals zero, then this one shuts off and this one turns on. So it jumps instantaneously from five amps to 10 amps at T equals zero. That's, that's what's gonna happen here with that. We, uh, we need an approach to this one. What do you wanna do? Let's, let's do what we've always done up to this point. And we know the general form of the solution. Uh, it might help us to know what we're after here. So I am after I. That I right there is going to be the current through the inductor, and I I'm, want I'm I for all times here. Okay, I know the general form of the solution is going to look like this. Uh, I final plus I initial minus I final times E to the negative T over tau. So that's the general form of the solution there. This circuit may not look exactly like something you've seen before, but it is essentially a, a Norton equivalent there. Getting RTH and VTH is uh, pretty straightforward. So let me, let me show you that this could easily become that, okay? Where that's four ohms and this is VTH and this is still the 0 0.5 Henry right there that we're interested in. So RTH, is four ohms. That was real easy. Okay. Now that I have RTH, I can figure out what tau is. Tau equals L over R. So that's 0 0.5 Henry divided by four ohms. That turns out to be 0 0.125 seconds. And if you take the reciprocal of that, one over tau, uh, one over tau is going to be eight. Okay. So what about uh, I final? Well, uh, look at this. I final after a long period of time, based upon your circuit's knowledge, uh, all of this current is going to be going through the inductor after a long time, okay? So after T equals zero, all of that current is 10 amps. So I final is pretty straightforward. You can see that that's gonna be uh, 10 amps. Okay. What about I not? Well, that's the same thing as I zero at T equals zero. Well, before T equals zero, what is the current? It's five amps. Okay. And it's only at T equals zero that it does the switch. So if we say I at zero minus is five amps, then because a inductor cannot have an instantaneous change in current, can't change suddenly, this has to be I at zero plus as well, okay? Now, all of that is just by, largely by inspection here. So with that information, we can go ahead and write down our final answer. I of T is going to be 10 plus five minus 10 E to the negative 8t amps. Okay, Let's reduce it down a little bit more. 10 minus 5e to the negative 8t amps. Okay, there's our solution for um, the current. However, we've got to include a singularity function. So 90% of the time, the singularity function is going to go with the t, and in this case it would, but you better double check it. Before t equals zero, let's see, what is, 
what is the current going to be? Before t equals 0, this is going to be 0. So the exponential is going to be a 1. And that's going to be 10 minus 5. So 10 minus 5 is 5. So it's going to be 5 amps exactly the way we anticipate it to be. After t equals 0, then this becomes 1. And it's going to do that. Okay. All right. So it does uh, look like it works out. Now let's say we wanted uh, the voltage. What's the voltage? The voltage is this voltage right here across that inductor. Well, you could figure it out. V of T is going to be L DI of T DT. So you can take this and plug in for L and take the derivative of this function here. And when you do that, you're going to get 20 E to the negative 8 T volts. So there's the voltage for this. Now, we derive that voltage using LDIDT. But we could have derived that voltage using uh, the general uh, equation. Uh, for example, we could say the voltage as a function of time is going to be equal to V final uh, plus V at zero minus V final E to the negative T over tau. We could do that right there. Well, we need to know what the final value is. What is, what is the final voltage? Well, after a long period of time, all of the current is going uh, through the inductor. The inductor behaves as a piece of wire. So we can say V final is going to be zero. Okay. Well, then what about V at T equals zero? What's it going to be then? Well, at T equals zero, when it's uh, making the switch from uh, 5 to 10 amps there, what is that voltage going to be? Well, uh, the voltage uh, is this right here. It's the same voltage there as it is there. Uh, well, what's, what's happening is that um, you've got a current of 5 amps on the other side of t equals 0. So on the negative side of t equals 0, it's 5 amps. On the positive side of t equals 0, it's also going to be 5 amps. So 5 amps is uh, what's going here. Okay, And then uh, how does that affect the voltage? Well, if 5 amps is going here, as it switches from 5 to 10, that means the other 5 has to be going down this way. Okay. So it's really, remember the resistor can have an instantaneous change in current. It's, it's the inductor that cannot. So 5 amps is what's going over here. It did it switch instantaneously. The other 5 amps is going over here down through this resistor. So the voltage across this inductor is going to be the same as the voltage across that resistor because they're both in parallel. So what does that mean? That the voltage at uh, t equals 0 is just going to be I times R. So it's going to be 5 amps times 4 ohms. So that just makes it 20 volts there. Okay, so with that information right there, we can go over here and say V final is 0 plus V initial 20 minus 0 e to the negative, and now tau is going to be exactly the same. Tau didn't change at all, so it's still negative 8t. Okay, reduce that down, simplify that, and that is just 20 e to the negative 8t volts. So there is our voltage across the inductor. And where does it need that? It needs the uh, singularity function, the unit step function right there. Okay, so those are our two solutions for the current and the voltage through that inductor there. Let's, uh, uh, that problem's done. Let's uh, do another one. Let's say I've got, uh, U of T amps. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to find V as a function of time. Okay, 
Well, uh, by this point, you, you should know what the general form of the solution is going to look like. It's going to look like this. V of t is equal to V uh, final plus V initial minus V final e to the negative t over tau. Okay. Well, uh, what is uh, tau going to be? Well, uh, you need to figure out what rth is going to be here. So that's really straightforward. Remove the source, and this is a current source, so it, you just truly remove it uh, to figure out that we've got a 6 and a 2 to get RTH, 2 ohm, 6 ohm. We've removed the source there, and so what is that? That's just 8 ohms. So RTH equals 8 ohms, okay? Uh, then tau is going to be RTH times C, so it's going to be 8 times 0 0.25, so that's just going to be 2 seconds, okay? Then 1 over tau is going to be 1 over 2 or 0 0.5. We need uh, V final and V initial, and we have to rely upon our circuit's knowledge, and just by inspection, you should be able to tell me what V0 is, okay? Uh, before t equals 0, there is no current flowing, there is no uh, charge, initial charge on the capacitor. So if there's no current flowing if there, uh, and, uh, or I sub s is zero, then the voltage across the capacitor initially is going to be zero. Okay, what about V final? Well, this is V evaluated at T equals infinity. So uh, long, long time, long, long time. So what is that? That's just going to be, well, the current I sub s after a long time times six ohms. Okay, so now now think think this through. At t equals zero, this uh, becomes five amps, and we've got five amps flowing. Uh, it's going to charge up the capacitor, but after the capacitor is fully charged there is no more current flowing through here. So if there's no more current flowing through there, there is no voltage drop on the two ohm. So the voltage of this capacitor then is just the same as the voltage across the six ohm. So that's where this comes from. This I sub S after a long time, uh, and, and when I mean after a long time, I mean after the current through the two ohm is stopped, then all of that current is flowing through the six ohm. So what is that gonna be? That's gonna be five amps times six ohms. So this is gonna be 30 volts. Okay, so we're ready to write down our, our final solution. V as a function of time is going to be V final 30 uh, plus V naught zero minus 30 e to the negative, and we can write it this way, t over 2, okay, volts, like that. Okay, well, uh, simplify that a little bit more, and we've got 30 times 1 minus e to the negative t over 2 volts. So there is our final answer for that one. That's about as far as I want to go here. We've worked... Uh, two, three problems here now for RL and uh, RC circuits. Next video, we're going to turn our attention towards RLC circuits. And I will, I will warn you, it's um, a little bit heavy on the math side, so it would probably uh, help you if you were to review uh, RLC circuits, natural and step responses for RLC circuits in the textbook before we get there. Okay, so see you next video. Yes, yes. Minimche, you limb Z. All right.
looking like a chocolate Don't wait up or stay out late I hop in my new truck Cruising like a cool f- I roll around with bass low Green light when I say so Everything on my way My whole life is a highway Oh my god, I'm so cool I could freeze your whole pool Beating like a grand do Just because I want to You can't tell me to wait now I whistle for a waiter I'm about to spend my paper See you later, alligator I'm a big girl Be just what I like to Put fire in your lighter Put fire in your lighter I'm a big girl Be just what I like to Put fire in your lighter Put fire in your lighter Take my picture. What you gon' do? What you gon' do? I know you get the picture. What you gon' do? What you gon' do? I feel I'm getting richer. I'm a big girl. Do just what I like to. Put fire in your lighter. Put fire in your lighter. I'm a big girl. Do just what I like to. Put fire in your lighter. Put fire in your lighter. In your lights up